Dangerous Gas Furnace, Australian Plumber. My name's Alan Hart and in today's video we're going all the way over to Australia. We've got an Australian plumber who is a subscriber and he sent us some videos in and some pictures as well of some dangerous appliances that he goes to see. So whenever you are in the world, please send me your videos, send me your pictures and let's do a video and show everybody what different plumbers all around the world see in their everyday life. Um, so as I said, we've got quite a few um, dangerous appliances in this video, some dangerous furnaces, some different words for me to learn as well in this one. Um, and as always, if you could please like, um, thumbs up, subscribe, ring that bell, all that good stuff, it really, really helps with the videos and I would like to thank my biggest fan before I go any further in this and that's my mum. My mum actually watches all my videos, she always likes them and she always comments as well or she comments quite a lot in the videos so yeah without further ado let's go over to Andy. Once again thank you to Andy for sending these in. The first one we've got is a 22 series gas wall furnace and i don't know anything about these but clearly we can see on the left hand side here we can see it's all melted out so i'm assuming that that is the heat exchanger that's all melted if you know anything about these then please add a comment below and let us know <coughs> could have burned the house down yeah Apparently this one had been serviced a few weeks earlier by the customer's son. So as always and as with UK, always make sure that you get your appliances serviced by somebody who, who knows what they're doing. In the UK, obviously it's gas safe, wow. registered. The next one we have here, it's an old natural gas barbecue that's been removed and it's been left with an open end on it. And just for the trainees in the UK, this would be classed as immediately dangerous or ID because anybody could come and turn that on and it's just an accident waiting to happen, is that? And that one was a ducted heater install. And as you can see from that, it's all it's all loose and it seems like it's on some sort of in some sort of roof on some wood wood boarding or something like that. Um it certainly doesn't look like it's supported very well. And this is one way of joining a flue. Not the correct way, but what it looks like they've put the they've put a smaller flue inside a bigger flue, and then they've cut the bigger flue. All the way around, you can see like little cuts in it, and then they bent it in together, put some bolts in, and then put some silicone sealant or something else around it like that. Obviously, a total, total bodge up. So thank you to Andy for that from from Australia. Uh, it's good to see other countries and how plumbing um, still we still get badly installed plumbing across across the world really if you've got any badly installed plumbing videos or pictures please send them in if you can send them that way landscape it really really helps with the video um now what we'll do we'll come back to the uk now and i'll show you i'll show you some some dodgy stuff from the uk so yeah let's have a look and the first one we've got here this is a worcester bosch cdi combi boiler and they've had a new roof and the roofer has pulled the flue out and as you can see there the flue is, is no longer in the top of the boiler and this has actually been left like this for a week so it, whenever the boiler was getting used obviously the fumes was coming back into the property so it's really really important if you're going to get any work done anywhere near a flue you make sure that it's checked 
by somebody who's gas safe registered or competent and has all the testing equipment to test it and make sure it's safe. Obviously, this could have been um, a different outcome for the customer. It could have been fatal, really. This one here, this is a Valent combi boiler. And if we can just see on top of the boiler, we can see it's got all brown stains. And that's that's obviously the flue is leaking. And that's what the, the brown stains are. That's the actual rust of the flue. So the flue is corroding. So that definitely needs to be checked and definitely needs to be looked at. I'm not actually sure what this next one is. This has been sent in. Maybe you could maybe you could add a comment below and let me know what type of flu this is and it looks like it's rotten front picture. This next boiler is a Worcester Bosch and it's a green star and I think it's a 24 or a 20 i uh, 24 or 28i junior and you can just see in there it's obviously been full of water I don't know the history with this I would imagine the boiler's been installed on a dirty system or something like that and maybe heat exchanger's gone on it at some point but it's it's in a bit of a bit of a mess and these are some electrodes out of um, um, a Worcester Bosch CDI combi boiler a Worcester Bosch Green Star and it just shows the importance of servicing them correctly and just changing them on a service if, if need be and just a real quick question do you know what this is I did ask the guys on the training group I know what it is but please put a comment below and let me know what you think it might be and what it's for and this next one, this is an Ideologic uh, heat only. I think this is a heat only one. Yeah, it's a heat only boiler. And as you can see there, it's in it's in quite a state. So it just goes to show it's very important that you have your boiler serviced and checked each year. And then any of these faults would be fixed under warranty if the boiler's still under warranty. Some really shocking pictures and videos there. And thank you to everybody who has sent them sent them in um, I've got um on this job here so this is on my the Vicera that I've installed I did a video on that installing the Vicera in my man cave um, but we've now put it on to relays so if you want me to do a video on relays then please put a comment below and why you would use relays on central heating system um, if you want to know more about that, as I say, put some comments below and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can get some time. Um, I'll see if I can get some time and I could do a full video maybe on relays, showing you how they work, how you wire them. We do have relays in. You do have relays in like um, in your zone valves and stuff like that. But um, in this particular case, because we've got underfloor heating, a normal zone valve wouldn't work because it backfeed on the pumps so it's a little bit more of a tricky um, way of wiring it um, but as I say if you want to know more about that please put some comments below and I'll I'll try and um, yeah I'll try and cover that for you I think that's it um, I think that's about it for today's for today's video really just uh, boilers on the wall there Got a few, quite a few boilers in here now. I'll just show you what I've got in here. So I've got a Wiesman compact there, a Wiesman 100. That's a um, uh, heat only boiler. I'm gonna do a review on that shortly. Um, also got some, we've got a few, we've got Pottertons, we've got some Baxi Solos. We've got Baxi, Baxi 600 at the back there. Also got back, uh, we've got a, another Wiesman combi there. That's the Wiesman that I used to have on the wall there. The one that I got out of a skip and that I brought back to life. And then I piped it up in here and got it working. We've also got, um, we've got a heat only, the new, the newer Baxi heat only, which is similar or maybe the same as the new Baxi 800. So we'll do a review on that shortly. As well, got a few Worcesters, Worcester bits. As I say, we've got 
We've got his relays, his relays on there. And that's all for today's video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you to everybody who helps, supports, um, likes, shares, comments, um, sends videos in, sends pictures in, all that stuff. Really, really appreciated. It really helps with me with this channel. Um, obviously, I do. I do most of this channel myself. I fund most of it myself as well. So when you see me buying new boilers and things like that, normally I've paid for that. I try and do that so that so the channel is um, it's my opinion, so it's not biased um, as such. Um, so that's the reason I try and do that. So I try and fund as much of this as I possibly can myself. Um, yeah, I'm uh, bowling on again. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. See you on the next video back at um, Viva Training Academy tomorrow. So I'll do some interesting videos with Russ. I know that um, a lot of people aren't right bothered about the training videos, but I want to do the training videos because I want to help and support the new people coming into industry. So even though them videos don't get as many views, I, I'm not really that bothered um, as long as it helps and supports some of these new new lads that come into new boys and girls or men and women or whatever that are coming into this industry now. Um, yeah, alright, thank you, thanks for watching.